an old villain returns in X-Men Gold issue 9. As the Russian cult prepares to bring Omega Red back to life, Anton Vanko prepares his newest whiplash armor while monologuing about America and their sanctions ruining his homeland. At the Xavier Institute, Kitty asks Peter to accompany her to Washington DC to watch the vote on the Mutant Deportation Act. The invite shocks Peter, seeing as both haven't really talked at all since it's splitting up. Elsewhere on the grounds, Nightcrawler and Rachel share their feelings for one another, leading to Nightcrawler asking Rachel to dinner. Arriving in Washington, Kitty and Peter meet Stephanie Hunter, one of Kitty's longtime friends and new congresswoman. Going with Stephanie, the mutants address the subcommittee on the deportation bill. The committee isn't too happy with Kitty's speech about human rights and her plea not to deport the mutants. After the address, Peter congratulates Kitty on her speech and asks her to dinner, which she doesn't think is that good of an idea. The dinner Peter takes Kitty on however is a surprise to her as it ends up with him confessing he wants to marry her and consider having a future with him. The next day, the subcommittee returns but are barely reconvened when Whiplash attacks the meeting. Giving the people enough time to escape, Peter and Kitty fight Anton before deactivating his suit and knocking him out. Later on, the two visit Stephanie who apologizes to her friends that since the attack scared the humans, they are voting for the deportation of the mutants. In Russia, the cult begins their ritual, focusing up their magical energies to bring Omega Red back to life. X-Men Gold Issue 9 saw an old villain return both to life and to comics as Omega Red reappears to most likely cause a lot of trouble for the mutants who are already dealing with a multitude of problems like the Deportation Act, which at the end of this issue ends up passing in Congress. What I hated about this book is it felt the need to do all these different romantic subplots as I guess the main story because that's what a lot of this book was, just these romantic subplots, these unneeded romantic subplots, and Enter and Van Gogh just kind of showed up f out of nowhere for no reason whatsoever, and because of these things, it reminded me the book is being written at the moment by a DC TV writer, since this book plays out like an episode of The Flash, with its needless romantic subplots that really don't lead anywhere, and villains who show up for no reason at all because they're cool. It sucks as well because this deportation story could have been really cool and a really cool look into the rights of mutants and the rights and wrongs and everything of them. I'm going to give this issue a 6 out of 10. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my newest video. If you enjoyed it, you might also like to check out my other reviews here on my channel. You can also follow me on various social media platforms like Twitter by searching Matt underscore FOS, or even join the Comic Multiverse Discord server and chat with other comic book fans, including myself and Joel from Cape Joel. Want cheap comics and trades? Head over to the book depository with the link in the description to get the cheapest trades and comics comics around, along with free shipping anywhere in the world. Until next time, this has been Matt of the Fortress of Solitude, thank you so much for watching.